Live from Nashville, Tennessee, it's the three. With the Studio C Band. And here's your host, Laura Harris Smith. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Laura Harris Smith, and welcome to the three. Yeah. This is the only television show out there that looks at how the crazy current events shaping our world are actually shaping you, body, mind, and spirit. Do you know what I'm noticing in the world today? People are finally waking to the idea that they need more sleep. They're understanding the link between good health and good sleep hygiene, as some call it. It used to be that all you heard about was diet and exercise, diet and exercise, but now what we're realizing is that for optimum health, it has to be diet and exercise and sleep. Once upon a time, I was a shopping channel host on Shop at Home TV. Yes, I am that person who sold you things in the middle of the night which you did not need. I'm so very sorry. But <laughs> I did sell you quality products. One of my favorite shows to do were not the jewelry shows or the skincare shows, but the bedding shows. Because the only way you can sell a mattress and a pillow is to crawl up on the bed, get cozy, and sell the concept of sleep. Mark was there, Mark, one of our cameramen here today, he was there back at Shop at Home and he remembers with me the, the big jib camera arm that would come in overhead on me and look, I'd look up into it and I would say, you spend a third of your life in bed. Don't you owe it to yourself to make your bedroom a sanctuary and get the best night's sleep possible? And the phones would go wild or what they call hot. That's because nobody cares about how many inches tall a mattress is. They just want to know if it's gonna help them sleep better. We are all so sleep deprived. And you know, we have sleep debts racked up taller than 10 California Kings stacked end on end. Well, my guest today is also in the business of selling sleep. He is doing a phenomenal job, I might add. He invented my pillow in 2004 and now, more than 30 million pillows later, with 1,600 employees and all pillows made right here in the United States, the company is still breaking records. But what you don't know is the B story behind this success story. It's the reason this success doesn't go to his head. And it's the reason that he wears that big gold cross around his neck all the time. And it involves addiction, and redemption. And it's not a story you're going to want to miss, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome to my stage, Mike Lindell. Welcome to the three. I am very excited to tell everyone that just before coming on here, we made a decision. Mike and I made an executive decision together. This is part one of a part two interview. We're going to keep him around for a while because when, when I just spoke to you, really, literally <laughs> yeah, over lunch, right, right. you told me about so many things. No way we could cram it into one show. Uh, uh, right. So thank you, for sh thank you for staying. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, I want to start at the very beginning. First of all, congratulations on the success of your empire. Thank you. Um, Thank you. But I wanna start back where, honestly, it says in the commercials it started, which was in 2004, mm -hmm. you invented MyPillow. What was going on in your life? Well, the, um, I was uh, actually had a dream. I, well, first of all, if we go problem solution, I, I'll do a little, little <laughs> what you were talking about when you were introducing me. I had pillow companies and bedding companies would sell us all kinds of things that didn't work. Mm -hmm. My pillows would go flat, I'd use my arm, fold them, and have neck aches and headaches and all these things. And I thought, am I the only one out there that has these problems? Mm. And I would be on, uh, but I tried all these pillows all my life. And then one night I actually had a dream. And, and the dream was actually the logo, my pillow before the pillow. You're kidding. And I got up and I wrote wow. my pillow all over the house. And, and my daughter came upstairs. It's actually in one of the commercials. Yes, my daughter know, came upstairs. She's like nine or ten years old. She says, she looks in there. It like everywhere wrote my pillow. All the different way you could connect the, the Y and the P. And she says, what are you doing? And, and I go, 
I'm going to invent this pill. It's going to be called my pill. And there were no mys back then, so right. it was kind of sounded weird. And she she grabbed her glass of water. She goes, Dad, that's really random. And she went back downstairs. And then Aww. a few days later, all the kids. And then I was getting and then another dream of what the pillow, you know, maybe what it could do. I didn't know this part. And, and, um, and these dreams were right from God. I look wow. back and go, well, the kids would say to their mother, they go, you know, what is with this pillow thing? Because it would go on for days, <laughs> then weeks, and they go, oh, it's just a phase. It'll pass. Right, the pillow phase. And then it was right across the street a few, a few months later, or a few years later. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. So you yeah. went from how many employees in the beginning? It was just you and your kids. Yeah, well, what we, we, we did if, is uh, we, it took about a year and a half. My one son and I, every day, he would get home from school, and we would try different things to go in a pillow, tear okay. different things, foams and beads and everything. Wow. And I'd say, come on, Darren. And, he, and I, I think he's told me... Uh, well, it was fun the first few days, but after that, <laughs> and we finally had the we had the pillow. It was one day. It was after 94 different things, I, you know, that I tried in there, and, and we, I said, well, let's do this, and we did it, and it worked. But then we had, didn't have a machine to make the the inside. And during that time, I'm telling my friends and family, I'm going to get a patent on a pillow, and and uh, wow. you know, and they're and they're laughing at me. Everyone was laughing. Really? Oh yeah, everybody laughed. And then the other half said, "If you come up with a pillow that does that, you let me know. I want one." <laughs> and uh, and then no, I um, I actually when it finally made the first prototype, and I made these pillows. And now we were dead broke, no money, wow. and but we had these like 300 pillows made. And I walked into a box store. I won't name the store, but uh, I've told their, talked to their CMO since. And they, uh, I said, how many pillows are, you know, I have the best pillow ever made. How many would you like? And I'm all excited. And the, uh, the guy literally looked at me and goes, I want to see your buyer. And he goes, you need to leave. And all, it was like, because well. I'm all passion. He took it as this guy's a nutcase. <laughs> and uh, so we couldn't sell them anywhere. And we mortgaged our house. I know that year the, to get it. Someone said, Mike, why don't you do a kiosk? I said, how do you spell that? What is it? You know? <laughs> and uh, so I did this kiosk. But the one day I happened to be there and selling, and this guy came up, and he said, do you have a business card? And I go, oh, yeah, I'm all out. And I wrote it on a piece of paper <laughs> of a phone number and gave it to him. And, and I actually, you've got to realize, back then, this kiosk, I had color from, from another store, color crayons that made family-owned and operated. Oh, and, that's uh, funny. And uh, another sign. Well, it was. I mean, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> but, I mean, I made my own signs. It was just so, it looked like some, you know, very cheesy, you know. And, hey, uh, it worked. Whatever yeah, you did, it worked. And, and then it got to be February or January, and we, I'm, for the first time, I'm kind of, you know, I was scared. I'm going, how am I going to support family? I have no money. We had mortgaged our house for just to even to buy Christmas presents. Wow. and. And uh, the guy called that I gave that number to. Okay. And he said, this pillow created a miracle in my in life. He said, it changed my life. Are you the guy that invented it? And I said, yeah. And he goes, and that was the only guy I gave my number out to. <laughs> so if you look back now, it was a very much a divine appointment. Mm -hmm. And he says, I run the Minneapolis Home and Garden Show. Would you like a spot in there? And I said, sure. I didn't even, you know, home shows and fairs. Right. And I went into there, that show... Changed my advertising. I was going to sell them myself then, yep. you know, because they worked. And I went in there with the passion, and we sold out the Minnesota State Fair. I applied there, got in there, and everything that could happen, happened. And then you, <laughs> when you talk about, uh, you know, a lot of it was my own adversity, mm -hmm. you know, my own addictions we'll talk, mm -hmm, we can talk about mm -hmm. in a little bit. But but it was, uh, it was painful. People tried to take the company. Really? Um, um, they tried to take the manufacturing, shut it down, so my pillow would never be made. And when was it patented? Were you protected That was in yet? 2005. And actually, okay. someone came up to me in 2005, and they said, at the fair, and said, uh, Mike, you, you know, you're this is never going to see big retail. You know the cars that get 200 miles a gallon. You never, you never hear about that guy. Yeah. And I'm going, what do you mean? I'm going, I better get this patent so at least I can good make it you. myself. Yeah. You know? No, that's good. So. so then you had an undercurrent going on in your life at the same time. Oh, yeah. And uh, this was, if we go back to 2004, the company was... Is being built, it's being built up until like the 2009 time, 2009. And those five years, the company was beginning to grow and experience success, but you personally were tanking. We're going to talk more about that yeah, after we come yeah, back from the break, okay? I'm here with Mike Lindell, everybody. Don't go away. More after the break. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching The Three. But you know, it dawned on me that I really need to officially introduce myself to many of you, even though I've been in television for 50 years. My parents put me in my first commercial at age three, and that path carried me all the way to the Shop at Home TV network where I was a host. 
I am a wife of 34 years to Chris, a mom to six adult children, and a grandmother to eight so far. I'm an author of, goodness, over 20 books and ebooks. And whatever I write, you can count on the fact that it will help you physically, emotionally, and spiritually because my passion is body, mind, and spirit health. I'm a certified nutritionist with a degree in original medicine. And my husband and I pastor a phenomenal church in Nashville called Eastgate Creative Christian Fellowship, where we help people get healthy body, mind, and spirit. So if you're ever in the Nashville area, I hope you'll stop in and say hi. You know, God had a son, but what he wanted was a family. So he sent Jesus to come and get us. Likewise, I had a TV career, but what I really want is a TV family. As you can tell by now, I have always had one foot in media and one foot in ministry, and it's all collided now on The Three. So please become a part of The Three's family. Visit the link on your screen to give a tax-deductible gift and help me purchase airtime that takes this fun, relevant, faith-based show to a faithless world. Some TV ministries would then call you a donor or a partner, but I'm gonna call you family. Go to the link and become a part of my TV family today. I can't do it without you. Thanks. Hey, what do you think of when I ask about your health? Probably just your diet, weight, or a sickness. But health involves so much more than just the body. You also have a spirit and a mind that need nourishing, and the Healthy Living Handbook is going to do just that. It contains a top 10 list of healthy living habits for your spirit, where we'll discuss your prayer life, the Holy Spirit, things you may be substituting for God and not even know it. Then section two contains a top 10 list for your mind. I'm gonna help you get organized, deal with stress, help you laugh more, and never be discouraged again. There's even a relationship quiz there that helps you make sure the people in your life are the right ones. Then in section three, there's a top 10 list for your body. We'll study the three biggies, meat, wheat, and sweet, and other things like weight loss, water consumption, and there's even my essential oils list that tells you which oils help the top 50 common household ailments. Go to lauraharrissmith.com and get your copy of the Healthy Living Handbook today. What if there was a reset button for your body, mind, and spirit? There is! I wrote the 30-Day Faith Detox so you could cleanse your body, renew your mind, and heal your spirit. There are 30 daily devotionals to confront emotional residues from past trials, what I call faith toxins, prayers to refresh your spirit, and then through yummy strategic foods, each of your 15 body systems are cleansed for a total body detox. People are losing weight and gaining faith. Go to lauraharrismith.com today to get your copy of the 30-Day Faith Detox. Everybody, welcome back to the three. I'm Laura Harris Smith, and I have on my sofa Mike Lindell. He is the president and CEO of My Pillow, and you know what? I've a, I've actually talked him into staying for a part two. So I want to jump right into this because this is going to take a while. Mm -hmm. This is where God really, really hits the scene in your life. Tell us what happened in those early years of My Pillow. Well, I was a cocaine addict from back to the in the you know for a long time, 15, 20 years, and. It had changed to crack cocaine in the early 2000s. And so when I, when I invented, people say that all the time, wait a minute, you invented my pillow in 2004 and five and you quick crack at everything in 2009. Mm -hmm. And they're going, that was a miracle in itself. Yeah, and, uh, exactly. So I actually had a, a parallel railroad track of trying to get my pillow, which was struggling, just doing shows and home shows, fairs and, uh, and, uh, because they wouldn't take us, no box stores, nobody would take us or take my pillow. And but when one thing was going on is I would do these shows, and obviously every addict out there knows addiction is hard work. It's hard to hide it. It's yeah. hard to keep going. So in crack, it's really hard. But we, mm -hmm. but I was able to do it because I just, you know, God, God carried me through that. I look back <laughs> now, but also. I would, wow. I would never break trust with the show promoters and stuff, and I wouldn't, obviously I wouldn't be doing it when I'd be doing the show. And I, was in, I loved helping people. That's always been my passion. So when people would come up at these shows, and they would go, they'd be talking to them, and the ones would come up that had my pillow would come up and go, this pillow changed my life. Wow. And I would like the story how it changed their yeah. life. The amazing testimony, it would be so dear to me, and it would just say, you know, I got to keep going in this. And I knew, even back then, God gave me the pillow for a platform of a much bigger thing. Of, uh, and sure. I knew this. I would get, I would get this in dreams. I would see these, you know, these things <laughs> in the future. Well, here. So during those five years, a uh, twenty-year divorce. I mean, we had mm. all these things. It was literally lights out in the spring of two thousand seven, mm. where the lights were going out in our house. 
uh, we were losing everything. We were making the pillows in our living room. We are actually on magic marker. I remember my wife at the time writing, you know, putting the magic marker and writing the people's addresses. And I'm in the other room going, how are we going to get out of this? We had people taking our company, wow. doing everything, our, losing our house. Mm. We got this divorce. And then I went heavy into the crack after that in 2000. Uh, there was always a string that we kept going. And then people would come in and want to mm. sell the pillow themselves at these shows. Mm. But then they would turn around and try and t take the company. Take the company again. The manufacturing was taken. The machine I had invented to, I had to invent to even make the pillows. That was taken by a big manufacturer. Oh, that took, He says, I can make them for you cheaper. And he, and he uh, took it and they... Uh, um, didn't keep their word. He didn't keep his like. word. He tried to say, well, I'm going to charge you back this. I go, no, that's not what I want for customers. And, wow. and uh, anyway, got up to the 2008 is an interesting part of the story, the, the spring of 2008. Um, and I got to tell this part, which I haven't told you yet. Okay. It's in February, and I had been on this little, this public access station in my hometown, in Minneapolis, and they, uh, um, I'm in a, I live in a suburb, and and it was, she kept airing this. Uh, this it was a little interview, right? Mm -hmm. And they would put a number up there, so I would get the I would get the calls, you know, to and would sell oh, them the wow. pillow. And I would be, and I would. Uh, it wasn't just sales. I wanted to fit them. I wanted to get them, you know, get them mm -hmm, sleeping right. Mm -hmm. And I get maybe <laughs> I'd be always like three in the morning, and I maybe get three, four calls, you know, in a week or maybe ten calls a week. So anyway, this day in February <laughs> of that year, I get a phone call at six o'clock at night. And, and at this time, I'm all by myself. There's all these things when, that had happened. So I'm mm -hmm. all alone out in this uh, place that I had. And wow. they said, yeah, um, I don't, I, you're the guy on TV I seen. I said, yeah. They said, well, I'm not going to buy a pillow, but God told me to pray for you that there, something wow. you're doing is going to be so big to the, to the world. And, and, one uh, little intercessor, yeah. one so, little yeah. person. That's oh, yeah. who you it, might gets, be. Yeah. It magnifies on that. So then I go, <laughs> I go, okay, and I was open to that. And she's praying, and she was, this went on for about 15 minutes, and she <laughs> says goodbye. I, and I have her name to this day. Wow. About an hour later, okay, this never happened before, another lady calls up and says, yeah, um, I, you're the guy on TV. I've seen you on <laughs> Channel 3. She says, I don't, God told me to call you and pray for you that what you're doing is very wow. important this platform. Whatever this pillow is, whatever it's going to lead to, is really important. And yes. can I pray with you? I'm going. Yeah. I mean, God strange things voice. have happened yeah. to me. So many things <laughs> have happened. I mean, I just took it as normal. I'm going sure. So we pray. <laughs> and now about uh, two in the morning, I get another call. It's happened four times that. This guy calls. This is the this same is week? A guy. Same night. Okay. Oh my word. So same night at two in the morning. Now I'm still up doing cocaine. I'm, I'm going. All of a sudden, two o'clock, the phone rings, and it's this guy, and he goes. Are you that guy on TV? And I said, yeah. He goes, well, I don't believe in God, but God keeps, I keep having this dream that God wants me to call you and say what you're doing is important. Now, I hope my dreams stop, and he slams the phone down. Oh but, uh, but okay. And, and so, now, wow. so now the next caller is 8 in the morning, and I just guessed, said, you don't want to buy a pill, you want to pray. She goes, how, do you, how did you know? You know I'm, I'm so I sit there, and we, and we pray. And, uh, and now I'm going, the same time now, you know, I would always stay up until I got, I could fix things, and things were okay. so bad in my life. Wow. All of a sudden, I'm up for two weeks, and three of my drug dealers, I'm in the, I'm living in, or I'm in the mini, middle of Minneapolis, the, the, one of the worst parts, and they all show up, and they go, you're going to bed, and we're shutting you off. Everybody, you're not getting any drugs. Wow. And I said, what? I said, you guys wow. know each other? And I'm going, you know, and they're going, you made us a promise. You told us someday you'll quit and you're going to come back and help us and help this addiction, all this, because I would always tell them that. Yeah. And, I, and it's, tr it's true. So I go out in the middle of the night and I, the one, once the one guy fell asleep to try and get drugs, nobody on the street would sell me any drugs. And yeah. I come back defeated and he, one of them takes my phone. He goes, he goes, take, he goes, take here. He takes a picture of me when I was up 14 days. He goes, you're going to need this someday for your book. He says, now you go to sleep. <laughs> and, and, and that's the picture you're seeing on your screen. Yeah, There's more yeah. coming back in just a moment with Mike Lindell. Stay close. <laughs>Hi everybody. You know, I'm very sympathetic to people struggling with chronic sicknesses, especially neurological issues, because as a young girl, I was diagnosed with epilepsy, and I used to have a constant electrical storm in my brain, which would cause horrible convulsions. Well, those decades of suffering, combined now with my degree in nutrition and my growing respect for essential oils and the amazing healing properties God put in them on the third day of creation, compelled me to create my very own oil blend called Quiet Brain. 
Quiet Brain is different than any blend I've ever seen because it's comprised of oils whose special composition is sesquiterpenoids, and they can cross the blood-brain barrier, which not all neurological medicines and not even all essential oils can do. But Quiet Brain's eight ingredients, frankincense, myrrh, sandalwood, lavender, and more, do. Our case study resulted in testimonies of considerable relief, elimination, at the very least support for PTSD, insomnia, migraines, stress, anxiety, seizures, and more. These aren't medical claims. Everybody's body varies and so your results will vary, but they are testimonies that cannot be argued with. So go to quietbrainoil.com for our patent pending oil. It comes in a roller bottle, a dropper bottle, which is great for diffusing, and there you also find our nasal inhalers, candles, shampoo and conditioner, and even our gift box with all the products, plus a diffuser. And download the free ebook while there to understand the science behind Quiet Brain. Again, that's quietbrainoil.com. Welcome back to the three, everyone. I'm here in the final segment of this first of two part interview with Mike Lindell. And you were just telling us, Mike, about this 14 day. Really, it was a 14-day high. The yeah. picture we, we just saw, you right. were on crack cocaine. What, what happened after the drug lords intervened? Well, when they intervened, I, like I say, I came back and the one guy says he, he was still waiting up for me. Uh, when they, after they did the, the little intervention, two of them left, said, we ain't selling, none of my guys are gonna sell yeah. me anything. And the one guy sat in a chair and I waited till he went to sleep and I <laughs> looked over and he, as soon as he fell asleep, I, I hit the streets wow. and they, but nobody would sell me even $100 for $5 worth mm. and they, I'm going, how do they know? How could they get the word out? And I came back mm. and he was waiting and that's when he took that picture. He goes, you're gonna need this for your book. You made a promise to us, you're gonna come back and help us and, wow. and help you know, get everybody out of this. It's, I, I always tell him about this platform. And, <laughs> but, when, but I didn't quit that. That was in the spring of 2008. And, and um, what I did, I actually then knew that God had this amazing platform for me and the pillow was just a platform for what, the, what is coming into fruition You now. knew that, even when you were outside of the will of God. Yeah. This proves, like, we are his children. Mm -hmm. We just have to awaken to that idea. Yeah. And so many people I told that to, so it's like, I, I don't, you know, I kept stuff from, from my book that goes all the way back so you could show that these things were, you know, proof that they happened. And the book okay. is coming out when? Yeah, yeah, it should be out by me. We'll talk yeah, about yeah, that yeah. next episode, go ahead. But anyway, what I did, I thought, okay, I thought this sounds pretty, you know, I, I was using that platform against quitting, and here's why I'm going, <laughs> so this sounds terrible. If I, so you mean to say I have all these responsibilities I'm gonna have when I quit, plus all the inner pains I have that the addiction is masking, and I said this, you know, and then I thought, well, you know what? If he's, if he's picked me for this platform, I can do whatever I want. I mean, wow. I, I can, I'm gonna live through anything. I had 14 near-death experience in my life, oh all my these goodness. different things, so. But during that year, then my sister even called me up. She goes, you know what? Your window's closing, God's, because she always told me God's picked me for this, and she said, mm. you're, she goes, you can't keep standing in front of semis, he's gonna, someone else is gonna get picked. Wow. And so now we That's get true. to a December of 08, and an interesting thing happened is, a friend of mine, and when we talk about people with addictions, to be able to relate with someone that's like you are, or whatever, yeah. you know, and they had, um, you know, my friend that I had did my original first time I'd ever tried cocaine, one of my mm -hmm. best friends back in the 80s, well, he was very similar to me. He had switched to crack and all this, but he had been, I hadn't heard from him, he had been clean for three years, uh -huh. and he had found God, found Jesus. Uh -huh. And I'd heard rumors of that, yeah. well then, all of a sudden, in December of 08, like I said, I could, it would take too long to tell you where I was at that time. I'm, <laughs> late, I'm in this room and by myself, and uh, he comes He comes in, I go, Dick, where you, you know, how you been, or whatever, and and he tells me, he goes, I, he goes, I, I was led here, you know, God led me here, and he <laughs> says, how are you been? And I go, and well, he, I was able to ask him questions that nobody else could answer for mm. me. I wouldn't have trusted anyone else with those questions. One of the things I said, Dick, is it boring? Is it boring to be yeah. a Christian? Is you wanted to, to be, know. Is it boring to be off drugs and a Christian, both? And I'm going, and I'm hearing this. He goes, wow. Mike, and then he's telling me, he goes, he's the one that told me, he goes, you know how much work it is with your addiction? Wow. All of our, you know, some of the addicts are the best workers and best entrepreneurs and best, you know, people in the world, but they just have these wounds. But anyway, we talked for quite a while, but I didn't quit that day, of course. You know, he left. That was yeah, just yeah. another, all these seeds that were planted. Well, then it was January 16, 2009, mm. and I knew 
instinctively by everything that that window was shutting it that was night. Shutting. It was like anybody out there, the old-fashioned TVs, they used to go down to a little tiny blue dot. Okay, and yeah. we'd sit there as a kid, and we'd turn them back on, right. and they'd come back oh to life. God, yeah. and, and I knew that dot was, it was going out. And, and I said, Lord, I said, I prayed, and I said, all right, here's the deal. I said, I'm praying, please, if you free me of these, not the desire for the drugs, mm -hmm. you know, I'll do this platform. I'm all yours, you know. And, wow. and and of course, I did finish that night, whatever. And I, but I woke up the next day, and I'm expecting this. Just oh, it's going to be, you know, yeah. terrible. And I didn't have any desire at all. Yeah. And then I'm going, and at that point, there was nothing left. The the company was taken. They, I mean, mm -hmm. they would, they had, uh, all my shows were taken. Mm -hmm. All these things were taken. Even my, to my to get my fabric where I had credit before, now I had no credit all of a sudden mm. because they were in on it. And yeah. they, and I had to come up, this is a real short strip, but I had to come up with $30,000. I'm going, okay, God, uh, I needed it by this following Friday. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I couldn't talk to two people in the same room, and I'm right out of, right out of addiction, and people with suits scared me anyway. <laughs> and this guy goes, a friend of mine goes, well, you can go meet these guys. They're uh, um, or actually, this was acquaintance. He said, well, you can go meet these guys. They're kind of ma mavericks or whatever. Right. And, Anyway, anyway, I went and met him. I need this $30,000. I walk in there a week later. I'm a week out of addiction. And I walk in and I said, and I went in there with just a T-shirt on. And, and I'm going, wow, there's all these C, C-I-O, C-F-O, C-E-I-O. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm, but I'm not nervous. You know, mm -hmm. it, was, it was just, uh, there was no nervous. Mm -hmm. And I walked in there with three jars of my patented foam and, and, they, uh, and a pillow. And I start telling him, yeah, people have taken my company and they're doing this. And I just, I used to be a crack cocaine addict. And. I need $30,000, I'll pay you back $40,000 uh, within yeah. three months doing shows. And the guy goes, when did he quit crack? And I said, last Thursday. <laughs> and the, guy, the, guy goes, the guy goes, four of them got up and left the room. You know, and I'm wow. going, and the other four, I go, well, now there's four of you, you're all going to put in $7,500. And, and, uh, and, and did they? I needed to forget, and they did. Now get this. Oh, wait, 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 uh, wait. I'm going to do this, because we've got we've to get on to episode two, because yeah, we are yeah, running yeah, out of yeah. time. I want you to tell us in the next episode all about this infomercial, because this is the point at which the investments came and all right, of that. Right. So, but first, you know, this show is called The Three. Right. So we're typically having to have, we, we're supposed to have three people out here. Right. Um, so I kind of have to do that, if you don't mind. I found sure. somebody. He's, he's really quiet. He's just going to join us. He's going to stand here. Is that okay with yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, for all sure. All right, let's bring him on out. Let's bring him on out. Yeah, here he is. This is this guy. I love this guy. <laughs> he? He's just going to kind of just, just put him over in my monologue spot over here. <laughs> I went to the MyPillow website, <laughs> MyPillow.com, and if you want to go and have a stand-up mic, and you're, we'll call him Flat Mike, Flat Mike, you too can have a Flat Mike. Mike, thank you so much for joining oh, us. Yeah. We'll be back next time with part two of our interview with Mike Lindell. See you later, everybody.